Hello, guys. Uh, I'll be doing this talk in English since I have two co-workers. I'm sorry for you, guys, but uh, well, and uh, but I'm Fr I'm uh, French, so uh, feel free to ask me question in French if you feel so. Uh, let's start. So I'm here to speak about Project Atomic. And uh, well, first, I'm a federal project contributor. Uh, I'm part of the board. I also killed it. And uh, I'm working the cloud working group, which is in charge of federal atomic host. And uh, I'm working at uh, Red Hat as open stack software engineer. But uh, I'm not here representing Red Hat. I'm representing Fedora today. Different thing. And I speak about many things, cloud computing, software, craftsmanship, and open source, of course. So let's talk. Everything started with the Docker revolution. Uh, here's a fellow coworker, Don Marshall, and uh, this gift can come from one of his presentation because, well, Docker has, since it's all these Docker crazed, everyone is speaking about Docker, 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 Docker. Uh, I think that most conferences could be called Docker bike sharing sessions recently. And um, what is Docker? Docker is basically uh, very based on very old technology called containers. Uh, it's oldest ancestors, which are Solaris zones, and these DGLs are more than 20 years old, so it's not a new thing. And for the first implementation of Linux, our vServers and OpenVZ, they have 15 years, so it's not something new. Uh, what is new that in the last five years, the Linux kernel got a default built-in implementation of containers called Alexi Linux containers. And uh, why does it matter? Because it, uh, containers are a lower footprint than virtual machine. Just retain that containers are mostly a different kind of virtualization. Uh, instead of emulating a full hardware, you, uh, you share a same kernel and you isolate every resources, be it memory, CPU, uh, even users, they are all contained. And the interest is that it's that ma many times more efficient than virtual machines. Uh, so it all started by a French startup in San Francisco. Uh, the, this guy is Solomon Hikes, the uh, founder of a company called DotCloud. DotCloud was a platform as service company. Uh, platform as service is also a new thing. Uh, and uh, for their needs, they had to develop, uh, they had to contain every, well, let's start by the beginning. Platform service is just a way to deploy applications in a can in a handy way. And you just have, you just have to write your code and just push it to Git and everything will be taken care of by the platform. And deploy your application, it will handle for you scalability. For instance, uh, you, you have more, you have a peak of activity, so the system will recognize this and allow, allocate more virtual machines and deploy it for you, deploy clone of your application to handle the load. And, well, they, f they feel that containers were a practical way to do that, to do that in their backend. So they developed the ancestor of Docker, which is not open source yet, but because it was just a proof of concept. And they feel that the platform as service was not the right way to deploy applications. In fact, Docker is not a virtualization technology. It's a deployment one. Because actually, deploying is a hell, hellish. Because you have to deploy different components, static websites, database, uh, queuing systems, web frontends, background workers, and API. And all of these are to be deployed in many different targets. Development virtual machines, servers, cloud comp computing, clusters, and it is very, very difficult problem to solve. So let's say that 
you want to develop a technology like Java, which allow you to write once and deploy everywhere, which is not actually the case. So uh, that's why they feel that containers could be a solution for that. Imagine that you you have uh, containers and you put your code, you put everything needed to run your application, and Im let's imagine like a container, it could be where um, it could be put in every carrier to run. Let's imagine an agnostic container. And the advantage of this pattern is that you are you have as isolation because your code runs in a isolated environment. It's automated because you don't know what is in the container. It's not your problem. Either pro the problem is that you sh you should be able to put this run this container on your machine. So Docker is a platform for, for distributed application deployment as lightweight and self-sufficient portable containers. But one more interesting thing is also that Docker does not ship only huge containers images. It also includes an interesting deployment pattern. You, you, for instance, you have to, f to bring a security fix in your application. Let's say Earthbleed. And uh, you have to redo your all images. Deploying all images from new is very problematic because it takes a lot of bandwidth. It's not fast. So let's imagine we could just ship the little bit what we want to update. And Docker allows you by using a copy and write technologies. And you ju and the developer just have to push the update in the Docker repository, and you just have to pull it and re restart your container from from new, and your update is applied automatically. So, it, Docker solves many problem packaging pro problem. You don't have to care about dependency. That's very awesome because I'm a federal packager and packaging is not as easy thing to do because there are because uh, you have many applications who may require conflicting conflicting um, dependencies and when you run your application in iso isolated containers you don't have to care about that you can ship different versions of the same requirements and it doesn't matter it's of also provisioning because it brings um, it brings, uh, it comes with a registry, a repository, which is called, the main one is called the Curb, but you ha may have your private one in-house. It also handles gracefully horizontal scaling. If you have, you just, you just start new instances and it works. So you don't have to worry about that. But, it also includes reporting and accounting. Well, at, uh, at this up a certain limit because Docker should, is not um, the solution to every every problem on Earth. It's all it's just a building block to solve this problem. So you have to use tools mm, on the top of Docker to manage your your infrastructure. And. So it's interesting to have that technology to uh, deploy and run applications, but there's another problem, how to host them in a modern fashion. And here's come Project Atomic. Project Atomic is a set of tools and a trusted operating system for end-to-end -end hosting of containers. So it's built about five components, well, uh, you can forget about GeoD because it's phasing out, actually. But it's built up upon Docker, of course. On SL Linux, which is uh, a security module in the Linux kernel to secure containers, we'll see that, about around RPM and OS3, and Systemd. If you, don't if you don't like Systemd, well, sorry for you. You don't have a choice. And also, a big, a big uh, one, Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, is um, 
an orchestration tool for containers made by Google, and uh, actually it's the, the current big thing. And uh, we found out Giddy in favor of Kubernetes. So these components, like SLinux, are here to enforce isolation using Mac uh, mandatory access control for containers, because, well, containers are not if we told you that containers are a fully isolated environment, they lie to you. Uh, actually, you share a kernel and not everything is isolated. You may not see from the guest the host processes, but there are loopholes allowing to do so. It's not a full isolation. If you want full isolation, I recommend you use uh, virtualization. So to enforce isolation, for instance, preventing a, co a process in a container to access another container, you have to use ISO Linux, which will enforce that for you. You have systemd for robust process and cgroup management, because the interest with containers is that using cgroups, you can limit uh, the resources used by your containers, be it memory, CPU, uh, desk, and uh, that's all. Uh, you have Kubernetes for orchestration, and Austri, which is a very interesting piece of software because let's call it Git for binaries. And that's also that's the main part making a uh, project that will make very inter uh, interesting project. So, uh, we have uh, the, the nice guy uh, you saw at the beginning, uh, Dan, Dan, um, oh, Dan Walsh, sorry, uh, is working and bringing patches to make SL Linux and Docker works well together, uh, especially to have separate levels for containers. Uh, SL Linux works using labels. So uh, the idea is to have labels for every containers. So if you have that, la the basic with SLX is that everything is labeled, and some users have access to some resources, and the filtering is done around the labels. And uh, of course, when you use containers, which are supposed to be full operating systems running side to side, you may have the same UID and that's a problem. So we enforce that using labels for different kind of users. Austri. Um, it's an open source tool to manage immutable version file systems. Uh, it's not a new, new software because it's used in GNOME for the continuous integration since 2011. Um, and it's Kind of interesting because it allows you to maintain different state of your operating system without relying on the file system layer. You may use any file systems. You could version your systems using it without worrying. It would even work on that. But you wouldn't want to use that. And the interesting thing also is that uh, it's a middle ground between traditional packaging systems and image updates. So we'll see that a bit later. So it brings atomic update and rollback. For instance, you update your image and it doesn't work, you could roll back at any time without worrying it works or not. It's a very it's atomic. It's an atomic operations. And um, also, if you have a uh, immutable file system, you have to have also mutable parts. For instance, to store specific configuration bits or your states, for logs, databases. So you have a TC and VAR, which are using a three-way merge, merge algorithm to merge the, uh, the update from the systems and Maintain, while maintaining your local state. And also it removes dependency resolution on from the clients to the server. And no more you. Uh, if you want to deploy, basically you don't have to touch anymore your 
uh, system. You just have to worry about, you just have to pull your application from the uh, Docker registry and that's all. So it may, it's, it is the maintenance cost on you. In this instance, uh, you have the traditional model using uh, um and apt get. So you update, you update the kernel, um, you, the user bits, etc. Var independently. In uh, the Austrian model, you don't have to touch to kernel in user. It's a single image, an immutable one, and it's mounted read only. If you make changes, it will be made on etc and slash var. So it's kind of uh, a an open source gig dream happening. It, you ha you're having almost a stateless system. You can crash it anytime and restart it, it should work. That's what we aim with Project Atomic. Um, well, you, you have, the, you have the, now the basis. You have an operating system which is strong and robust enough to, uh, to deploy on, to deploy on uh, containers, but you have to orchestrate them or it would be useless to, for a nothing uh, platform. So Kubernetes is a high-level orchestration tool for containers. It uh, handles for you container instantiation, instantiation and uh, it handles many kind of targets platform. Google Computing Engine, of course, Azure, CoreOS, which is a competitor to Atomic and, of course, Atomic hosts. And it handles capability well, not automatically at the moment. Uh, there are people working on adding scheduling, uh, advanced scheduling in Kubernetes to handle scalability for you. And well, Project Atomic is a set of tools, but it doesn't provide per se operate this operating system. This operating system, which are called Atomic OS are provided by downstream distribution. Um, we have uh, Fedora 21, which will come with an atomic host. Uh, that's why I'm here, because the Cloud Working Group is a group uh, in, in responsible of the atomic host, Fedora atomic host. Uh, I know that the CentOS guys are also working on it. And uh, Red Hat will also provide uh, with uh, RHEL 7 atomic host on its on their own. Another interesting thing is that atomic is also the basis of the next generation of uh, the OpenShift uh, platform as service. Um, OpenShift is a classic uh, platform as service. It uh, you, you, it used only Ansel Linux for uh, isolation, but let's face it, uh, Docker has become uh, a generic way to deploy applications, so it was very interesting to base the next version of OpenShift upon Docker. And that's why they decided to use Atomic OS as the basis for the, for the next OpenShift. So, do you have any question? What is the difference between, or differences between Core OS and Atomic? Um. Yeah. Um, at, um, well, the, di the main differences between CoreOS and uh, Atomic OS is that we, have, we provide a middle ground between traditional uh, distribution model based on packages and uh, the minimalistic approach of CoreOS. For instance, you could generate your own Atomic uh, image for yourself. Uh, using Austri because we have a tool called RPM Austri which take packages to build that emittable image which is kind of interesting because well 
One size does not fit them all, uh, which is the pattern prompted by CoreOS. And also, uh, we are working on to providing a full ecosystem around Atomic. Uh, I haven't speak, uh, spoken about uh, a project called Cockpit, which is a, a server management uh, web applications. And it will be integrated into Atomic and it's container aware, so you will have high-level orchestration, monitoring, reporting, in a single system, and it will also handle traditional web servers. So you m can manage with one tool all your infrastructure. Does it answer your question? Okay. Any other one? Well, if you didn't understand my talk, well, Brian is here to fix things be be after m to fix my mess after me. Sorry, Brian. <laughs>